Good. Hi. Great. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm Jana with Whiskey and Sunshine. So the this movie was fantastic. Loved all of you guys in it. Thank um, you. One of my favorite parts of the movie was that imagination sequence um, where you, you know, the floor changes and all that good business. How much or any of that was improv? And can you tell us a little bit about that process and just like how much fun it was to put that together? I can go first on that. I, I, yeah. Just that because it was one of the moments where I was really quite taken with, um, one of the many moments taken with John. It, it's easy to sort of, you know, establish a little narrative that we, you know, this happened and that happened. And it was like, you know, we moved the needle this way and kind of created a moment. But really John wrote a script that was so utterly beautiful, but so detailed. I mean, every little beat, the way the light hits a wall, I mean, all of that kind of stuff. You just rarely see that. A script is sometimes a bit of a labor to get through, especially, you know, stage direction, those kinds of things. But John kind of writes a bit in a sort of whimsical, uh, uh, writerly kind of beautiful way. It's like reading a novel or something. So mo so much of that was in, in the script, and it was really, I loved it. And then Kaylee just crushed it. I mean, Thank her you. dance number was unbelievable Thank changed you. my kids lives because they were there they saw her and they've been enrolled in dance literally since that day so, so great thank you and tessa you can take the next question awesome thank you guys so much i'm tessa with mama's geeky appreciate the time um i've seen if twice now i loved it even more the second time it's so good um, but I noticed a lot of things. This is maybe a little spoilery and I'll hold it if I have to, but Ryan, there's a lot of things sprinkled throughout that give hints towards what's going to happen a little later with your character. And I love how subtle that is. Can you talk about kind of being able to include that where it doesn't give it away, but it definitely lays the breadcrumbs. Yeah. I mean, I love movies that you revisit and you can kind of see, you know, how we got to from point A to point B. Um, you know, those little tiny moments along the way. But again, that's a, it's John Krizian's gave me the guy. I just, it's, it's a, especially with a reveal like that, you just have to sort of a wholeheartedly surrender and trust him. And John is thankfully a very easy guy to mm -hmm. <laughs> surrender and trust, uh, surrender to and trust. So I, I, yeah, I really just kind of followed the prescription to the T and, you know, and, and for me, that was, that was a, a ball because I didn't have to do a lot of that thinking myself. I really let him just work the meat puppet uh, as much as he could and get me to do what he needed to do. So when he, when he needed for the story. So yeah, but I love that little moment at the end. Me too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Megan, you could take the next one. Wonderful. Kaylee, it's hard to steal a scene from Ryan Reynolds, but you managed to steal the whole movie and it was an absolutely oh, stunning performance. This is how I find Thank out. Thank you. Yes. You tell me. <laughs> so this question is actually for all of you. I would love to know who your real life if is, that person who is there for you unconditionally when you need them the most. Mine's my mom. I mean, my mom goes everywhere with me. She mm -hmm. was there every day. And she's always there for me. I mean, she's my mom. I love my mom. And it was just Mother's Day. I got to spend the day with her. It was really fun. I love that. Yeah. Uh, my wife would be that person. Uh, I don't know much more I can say about that. When we got married, I saw her at the end of the aisle. And I was, I was overwhelmed with my sense of calm that, uh, and appreciation that I had this person in my life and just uh, imbued with thanks. So, and it's almost 30 years later and I still feel the same way. Yeah, for me, definitely uh, Steve's wife as well. <laughs> um, She's like that. Yeah, my, my marriage is one of those Hollywood arrangement ships. So, um, yeah, only actually seen her a few times, but she seems nice. Um, yeah, but that's not hard to look at. Nancy but yeah. is there for you. Yeah, she's been so. there for me like a, like a rock. Yeah. You know? She's a, really, She's a uh, yeah. good, good woman. Every single time. Yeah, so that's <laughs> mine. Well, I won't tell Blake, so thank you very much. No, never heard of her. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and Christy, you can take the next one. Beck, thank you. I'm Christy from Raising Wasians. Um, this is for Steve. I would love to know, um, since you're so, you have such good, iconic, animated characters, how challenging was it to bring Blue to life and make him different from your other characters that you've done? Well, again, you know, the way Ryan described the way John writes, he's, he's so detailed and he's so specific in how he hears a character and how he sees a character. Um, and really the, the overview of how all of these characters interact. 
So we did, you know, it's funny. You think you kind of just show up and do a voice and then, hey, see you at the premiere. But it wasn't like that at all. We talked a lot about who, who, who this, this creature is and uh, how would you encapsulate the, the persona. And I kept thinking of him as a, as, as a, like a, a Labrador or a, you know, a golden retriever, just complete, like the personification of earnestness and joy and hope and happiness. And, uh, and that's what sort of led us into it. Um, but also funny and, and sweet and kind of charming and maybe one or two steps behind, but, hmm. but always, always willing to try to catch up. But I, I attribute a lot, most all of that to John and, um, and how he envisioned it. And I just tried to service that vision. Thank you so much. Thanks. And Tegan, you can go ahead. Hi, I'm Tegan with That Said LA. Thank you so much for your time. Um, my, we did a round table with John and he mentioned that there was the use of puppets on set in place <laughs> of the ifs. And so I was wondering what was it like acting with those puppets since there were so many characters that you had to engage with? It was very helpful. I mean, for me, it was incredibly helpful because you get to see something you know, in front of you, you get to react and interact with it in, you know, in ways that are a little bit more difficult. It's like a tennis ball or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of the therapy I do is with puppets, you know, uh, but, uh, so no, yeah, it's, it's been, uh, it was, it was very helpful. You know, also I was beaten a lot. I was beaten by John. John if you watch the, the sort of the B roll and the stuff. No, I mean, it's because, everywhere. No, I'm, I am abused by these puppets. And John is, and, and I know for a fact that that was just John getting his rocks off because <laughs> None of that's in the movie. I mean, getting smacked around uh, by a- It was a, you always know, a, Cosmo too. Yeah, it was a Cosmo a lot, yeah. There's a whole scene where he took the, the blue puppet and just beat the living Nuh -uh. crap out of me. And you don't see that anywhere in the movie, do you? No, he was, uh, yeah, I was beaten a lot, but it was, it's, it's all crucial to the story. I get mm -hmm. to, yeah. We had to have it. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he was the, that was the he one was too. Those. Yeah, that was the one guy, right? Cloak and Dagger. Yeah, Cloak yeah. and Dagger. And Kathy, you can go right ahead. Hi, I'm Kathy with Live with Kathy, and thank you so much for being here. Um, I wanted to know how do you think if movie contributes to the overall landscape of family friendly films and storytelling? It's a big question. How it fits into the landscape? Yes. Um, They're making a multiverse again, they're doing it everywhere. <laughs> they should. I, you know what's interesting to me is the tone of it, I think, is a little different than a lot of family-friendly movies because um, there's there's a quietness to it. There's a, you know, it's it's lively and fun and silly, but there's also kind of a, I don't, I don't even want to use the word darkness, but there is a, there is an emotion that underpins the entire movie that I think is, uh, is very eloquent and, uh, and pervasive. And uh, I think it's a, it's a family-friendly movie that makes people genuinely feel something. Um, so I think some, I think that's different. Yeah, I also I think that the bar is high too when you go to a movie that is. You guys do it with Despicable Me a lot too, where you get to go see a film that the grown-ups enjoy as much as the kid. You know, they really spread it out in a way that um, I, I'm very grateful for, and I think that's something that John really. Uh, captured beautifully with this film. Like, yeah, I think the difference is, you know, you can earmark something as a as a kids movie or a family movie. And I think this this falls much more into the family. Yeah. Like everyone can glean something from it. Mm -hmm. It was superb. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right, fellas, the Patricios, you can take the next question. Hi, I'm Carter with the Patricios. And I'm Kennedy. Um, and we saw the movie on Saturday and it was amazing. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. This question is for all three of you. And what made you want to be part of this film? <laughs> wow, go for it. What made you want to be okay, part of it? Okay, I, uh, well, I originally, whenever I was going to audition, I didn't know what it was about. All I knew is that it was John in charge and it was a family movie. And then I was immediately interested. Um, but I, I, 
I remember reading the script for the first time and I just completely fell in love with the idea. I connected with my character immediately and I feel like the whole time we were shooting, I feel like I wasn't acting. I was living the movie mm -hmm. and it just, I just, my brain's melting. So it's not, I'm not good at describing it. I don't I have I thought that words. was pretty good. Actual melted brain matter is, that's not easy I to I feel do. like the marshmallow. No. I'm not lying. No. That's what I feel like. That's how I felt too. I had them drill a hole in my head and mm. give me a straw and they just slurped out my yeah. brains because they were melted and gone. I John pitched the movie to me in my kitchen. Our, our kids are friends and um, and he pitched to me and I was just, I right there, I mean, it was kind of over for me. I was desperate to be a part of it in any way, shape or form. Um, I loved that it really centered Kaylee's character's experience and and I felt like my own daughters could really relate to to a lot of that um, So yeah, I was kind of just in right off the bat even before there was a script. Yeah, I was same with me I mean John is the sweetest guy most talented. So like wh Why not? He's uh, I, it just seemed like it would be a, a blast to be a part of Thank, Thank you, you.